So today's one we're looking at force summation. Um, now just very quickly, force summation is the combination of correct timing and also sequencing of large muscles to smaller ones to produce maximum force. So whenever we look at any sporting uh, movements or an example such as the one over here of the basketball free throw, uh, we're always looking to apply force summation to this and obviously how it applies in terms of uh, the correct timing and sequencing of the larger muscles as you can see in the example over here to smaller ones to make the shot. <clears throat> so, so far there's a couple of key parts to force summation that we need to know and the first one is that it's used to produce more force. Uh, for example, baseball pitching, so as you can see the examples over here, all right, a good example of force summation is pitching in baseball. All right, They can't generate as much force standing up normally, so therefore when they uh, pitch the baseball, they need to generate more force, and they do that by bringing their leg up and in, and then generating more force through starting the movement down in their legs, and it moves up their body, obviously, through into their hands where the movement finishes. Uh, the second part of force summation is that the movement starts with the biggest muscles. This is the most important part of force summation uh, because we wouldn't be able to generate the amount of force needed if we were using smaller muscles. So things like your quads, okay, uh, are going to be some of the most important ones. Those are the kind of muscles that are bigger and stronger and therefore can generate more force. If you have a look at the example over here, just with the arrows now, you'll see that it always starts off with legs. So in each of the examples over there, it starts up with legs and then it goes through to hips, shoulders, elbows and wrist. Okay, now obviously we started with bigger muscles in our legs and smaller muscles in our hands. The most important part to notice with these, if you have a look at each example, it always finishes up with smaller muscles. So important parts for this slide over here is that full summation is always started off with larger muscles larger muscles being your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, and then from there obviously transferring through your body. <clears throat> if we have a look at the example now that we have over here, up the right hand side we have the amount of force generated, and down the bottom we have the amount of time that the movement takes. Now this example over here is really, really handy because it shows that when you're using force formation you need to make sure that you're using the muscles in the correct sequence. In order to generate more force, obviously in all the examples you can see over here, our legs are the ones that are generating the initial force. So if this was a baseball throw, this would be the part over here where the leg comes up and then transfers into the hips, up through, into your core, your shoulders, through your arm, your elbows and finishes in your wrist and your hand and that's where the ball is released. Now you can have a look over here and see as well with the amount of force and the timing that these ones over here with the arrows pointing to right now are very close together. So what that means is that the amount of force generated for this particular movement is not as good as the middle one and the reason why is that these muscles over here, the hips, shoulders, elbow and wrist have come in too early. If we go to the second example and we compare and contrast between the first, second and third, we can see that the difference between the second and third is that the timing of the muscles is a lot better. This allows for more movement and more force to be generated at each muscle group. And obviously you're getting a full range of motion. in each joint. If you have a look obviously at the final one over here, the movement is started in the legs, it's almost finished before the hips come in, almost finished, shoulders come in, so the amount of force generated is far less than the middle one, and the reason why is that the person has fully extended and this is only then transferring into the next muscle group.
Cool. So in summary, we need to think about full summation. All right. It's the ability to generate as much force as possible into movements. Second of all, we need to think about the fact that it's larger to smaller muscles. And third thing is that it is always in a sequence. Now, each movement obviously is going to be very important when using force summation. In a uh, shot put, for example, obviously we'd look at using force summation. We'd start off with our larger muscles over here and we move to our smaller muscles in our hands we will release the shot put cool your final activity for today for this uh, tutorial is to have a look at either the basketball free throw or the pitch in baseball and with a partner I'd like you to discuss how full summation applies to one of the following examples. Obviously, first slide over here, and first image over there, and then from there you go into number two, three, four, and five for the basketball, and obviously for baseball pitching, you have full summation starting here, legs, core, chest, obviously, into arms, finishing in your hands. So if you could discuss that with your partner and come up with a reason about how force summation applies to one of these movements.